welcome to my second ever video tutorial. Um, hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter than the decoupage one, but we'll see how it goes. Today I'm going to talk about distressing and glazing techniques on furniture. Uh, what are they? Uh, why do we use them? And then I'm going to show you on a few piece of furniture how to glaze and distress a piece of furniture. Um, distressing, what is it? Basically what it is, is when you paint a piece of furniture and it's nice and dry, then you sand back certain areas of it to reveal the natural wood. Um, what it does is it gives you a shabby look. You've all heard of shabby chic, so it's that type of look that you'll get from distressing. Old, used, um, or as some people would um, call it, destroying the beautiful paint job they've just done on their piece of furniture. But, <laughs> um, the only thing I mean I can compare it to why we do it is exactly the same reason why you would have bought a pair of jeans years ago and went straight at them with the scissors. It's to get a specific look and the look you're looking for is worn, old, shabby. Now, uh, glazing. Glazing is basically using a translucent colour over your paint. So it's... Um, Again, to get, depending on what uh, colours you use, it can give an old, really antiqued, dirty look to your furniture. It can either give a beach washed um, look to your furniture, or if you're using different colours, brighter colours or anything like that, which I'll go into in a few minutes, it can give you a two-tone look on your paint, painted furniture. Um, Glazing and distressing can be used together, uh, which they work really well together, but they can also used, be used individually as well. So they don't have to go with each other the whole time. Material wise, okay, so there's quite a few different materials when it comes to glazing. So I'm going to start off with them just to show you the ones that I use. Uh, first of all, what I was saying earlier about the different types of glazing, whether you want it antiqued or beach washed or something like that, you can get pre-made glazes. The ones I use are called general finishes and you can get them from, um, you can get them online basically. Um, general finishes do the very popular colours we'll say. So we've got black and I've also got white today. Now, you can get them in brown as well. And these would be probably the most used kind of glazes to give that, black and brown would be to give that very, very old aged um, kind of look, um, like this photo. <laughs> and uh, the white put over a color can give a real beach washed kind of look. Don't have a photo for that. So, um, you can also then make your own glazes. So making your own glazes, you can get this. It's called scumble glaze from Polyvine. And you just mix it with your usual paint according to the instructions and it make the paint translucent. So for example, if I painted something green and I wanted a pink glaze over it, I'll paint it green as normal and then mix this with the uh, pink glaze or pink paint. It'll make a pink glaze and I can just wash it over the green. You'll still see the full green but it'll have a really really nice glaze of pink over it. Like this photo. Uh, okay so that's the glazing just material wise for a minute. Distressing then? What do you need? Okay depends how much distressing you want. Now I always advise start off small and then go as big as you want. A sanding sponge is great. If you want just slight little distressing, especially just in little corners or places that would normally wear and tear, this is great. It won't take off much paint at a time unless you put more pressure on it, but it can take off just a slight little amount just to take the flatness off the paint. If you want to go a bit harder and take off a bit more, especially on edges as well, the sanding block is good because it's a little bit harder and harsher. So again, you can put more pressure on that and it will take off more paint. If you want to do something what I would call forced distressing, um, I would normally use kind of a medium grade sandpaper, a little bit something a little bit more coarser. And basically you would put a lot of pressure on that. The forced distressing really is where you're distressing paint off, air, off flat areas, areas that wouldn't normally be areas that would wear. This is what forced distressing is. So you can see on the front of it, on the, the, the cabinet do doors, a lot of pressure has gone on there to take back the paint and you can see the wood then shining through. 
Okay, so that's material wise. So let's show you how to do some glazing and distressing. Now I have a locker and you might actually recognize the uh, decoupage on the drawer. It's done the other day. So we're going to do the next part on this today and then the next tutorial will be the hardware where I'll finish it off. So I'm just going to show it from this side. So basically you have these lovely lines here and they're made for distressing. We've also got these lovely lines here, these indented lines, again, perfect for distressing, but also for glazing. Glazing and distressing also tend to take the flatness of a paint as well. Now, it's not saying that flat is bad, not in any shape or form, but this color will be completely different once we put glazing and distressing on it. It will completely transform it. So I'm gonna show you the before pictures and the after pictures of the paint before and the glazing after, just to show you the actual difference of when you do these techniques on paint. So I'm gonna start off with the sponge, just to show you. So the sponge is great for these areas because it won't go in here. It's just going to hit the areas, the little corners. And that's all you want because you just want little bits to be distressed. I hope this is coming up on camera. Hopefully. So you can see there, a little bit coming off. And it's just a really, really light little bit coming off. Not much at all. Very, very little. And that's, we don't want too much. Now, if we want to go a little bit harder, because here I want to put a bit more pressure on it because it's actually flat rather than having corners on these. And I do want to take a little bit off these so it kind of highlights them a little bit more. So I'll use this for this. So we'll put a little bit of more pressure on it. And you can see there then all the paint coming off as well. So it's distressing really nicely. Thank God. <laughs> so we'll get this bit down here as well. So if you're just doing a slight distress on pieces of furniture, these are the areas you want to do. The corners around here, these kind of corners, the bottom of the legs, anything, that's, anything that stands out. Flat areas you would normally leave alone, uh, unless, as I said, you wanted to do forced distressing, which is something, which is a technique in itself altogether, where you really want it, the, like the paint is falling off the piece, you know? And again, it's a really nice finish if that's what you're into. So I'm just going to do these two bits. And then once they're done, I'm going to show you the glaze. So the glaze I'm going to use today is the black glaze. They all work the very same, so it doesn't matter which colour I use. Now, so I'm just going to get a brush there now just to brush off any little bits. should be able to see the distressing there all down this side. We could leave it like that, but I'm going to use this, uh, the glaze now to even give it more of a standout look. So, general finishes, this is black. Open that up. Now, there's a few ways of doing this. You can put it on with a brush and wipe it back off with a cloth, or you can just put it on with the cloth. I normally put it on with a brush because I can just put on a little bit and then wipe it off with the cloth, a clean cloth. Just, you just want a little small cloth. What I normally do is rather than dampen it too much under a tap, I'll just spray it with a little bit of water. Don't actually even want it um, wet at all. Just slightest little bit damp because if it's too wet, it's just going to wipe all the glaze off. Whereas I just wanted to have a little bit of moisture in it just to be able to wipe off a little bit uh, as much as I want. Now, with the glaze, there's no right or wrong with this either, you know. Put it on, take it off. You want less, wipe more off. You want more, put more on. If you glaze and you're looking at it and you're going, I do not like this whatsoever, go get your paint roller and go straight back over it again. Absolutely no damage done whatsoever. So it's a great thing to try out. Again, no, no right or wrong, trial and error with it. 
So, what I ideally want here is I want you to sit into these little grooves just to really highlight it. So, I'm going to always try and go with a straight line when you're doing this. When I do this in the workshop with people, they get a heart attack and they're kind of like, oh my God, you're destroying my veins. <laughs> so then just wipe it off. As I said, wipe off as much as you want or as little as you want. Now, hopefully you can see this now. So you can see the difference in that one and that one. So this has black highlights on it and it changes the color completely on this. So I'm going to do a little bit into the middle just so you can see the difference between this and this. Now, so I'm going to take this back off, go in a straight line, then get the other side of it, go again. And as I said, take off as much or as little as you want. There's no right or wrong here. So hopefully you can see that now. So that's glazing. That's without glazing. That's distressing. And I'm going to show you the other side then. That's without distressing. So the funny thing is, is once you actually do the distressing and the glazing, when you actually look back at the paint on other sides of it, it actually does look really, really flat towards when you have put the new technique in place. So what do you think? Is it something you'd be interested in? It's a really, really simple technique. There's nothing to it whatsoever. Um, all these materials can easily be got online at the moment and they're easy to do and as I said the great thing about them is if you try it and you don't like it literally just go right back over it with your paint. Uh, I'm going to go and finish this now so that I have some proper before and after photos to show you at the end of all my tutorials. The next one I'm going to do is on hardware and so we're going to do that now hopefully in the next few days and i'll have hardware for this as well and we'll finish it off and i'll be able to show you everything then all right thanks